We take privacy extremely seriously. If our customer was our product, uh, we could make a ton of money. We've elected not to do that. When we think about our customers, we think about privacy being a fundamental human right. Returning control to users. Yes, Apple sees itself as an angel when it comes to privacy issues and many bought this claim. But closer inspection of the company's massive interconnected gadgets entails Apple is running probably the largest spying machine known to man. In this short episode, I will look into what is lurking behind Apple's enormous interconnected web. Last year, Apple introduced AirTags to the consumer market designed to locate lost devices such as keys, wallets, gadgets, etc. These tags use Bluetooth low-energy signals in order to establish communication with the nearest BLE-emitting Apple device. This might seem a harmless and convenient technology on the surface, but the privacy implications are enormous. Before showcasing the privacy aspects of these new communication mechanisms from Apple, I have to first briefly explain what BLE is and how AirTags work. BLE stands for Bluetooth Low Energy and helps to initiate a longer Bluetooth communication up to a 100 meters range with very low power requirement. In 2010, the Bluetooth Special Interest Group SIG, introduced Bluetooth 4.0 and BLE along with it. The main difference between Classic Bluetooth and BLE is that Classic Bluetooth is designed for continuous, two-way communication, whereas BLE transfers smaller packets of data over short periods of time. It is ideal to transmit tiny bits of data between devices and can run on coin cells batteries for months or years. Additionally, Classic Bluetooth only covers 10 meters range, while BLE can reach up to 100 meters. The explosion of IoT devices significantly facilitated the propagation of BLE. Currently, Bluetooth Low Energy is the most widely used mesh networking protocol eclipsing Google Thread and Zigbee. It transmits and receives signals in the 2.4 GHz range. Home Assistant devices such as Amazon Echo use BLE modules for communication. Apple AirTags also use Bluetooth Low Energy chips. AirTags emit or broadcast Bluetooth low-energy beacons in order to announce their presence to the nearest iPhone. Each tag transmits an encrypted unique identifier using BLE. Any compatible Apple device within a 100 meters range relays or multicast the original data through a peer-to-peer -peer connection until it reaches an iPhone or a Mac with an internet connection. Here, every iPhone in the vicinity acts as a message relay agent. After the initial Bluetooth traversing, the last Apple device that intercepted the packets relays it to Apple servers along with its location data. The tag's owner can then log on to Find My App portal and access those location details. AirTags by themselves don't have GPS capabilities. Rather, they ping BLE signals continuously to the nearest Bluetooth-enabled Apple device which has GPS capability. The sheer scale of Apple devices that are involved in this massive BLE mesh is never seen before. There are potentially hundreds of millions if not billions of Apple devices configured to broadcast Bluetooth beacons every two seconds unbeknown to the owners of these devices. Every iPhone, assuming Bluetooth is enabled, is configured to listen to AirTag beacons without requiring the owners to activate this feature. The craziest and frightening aspect of Apple's BLE mesh is every compatible iPhone BLE module work even if the iPhone is completely completely turned off. The BLE module inside your shiny gadget continues to broadcast location data to its nearest sibling iPhone. The only way you can prevent your iPhone from pinging your location is by running its battery down to zero or by putting it on a Faraday cage. The nicely crafted marketing statement from Apple won't mask the fact that these AirTags, along with the millions of iPhones helped to create a corporate surveillance system even beyond the wildest dreams of Google, one of the biggest offenders of privacy. Apple also upped the ante of its aggressive privacy invasion activities by introducing a relatively new technology called ultra-wideband under the guise of precision and convenience. Currently, only iPhone 11 and 12 models support this feature which is thought to improve the precision of location tracking. This form of precision tracking enables users to locate the missing tag with significantly high accuracy. Despite Apple painting itself as a bastion of user privacy, the location data that is generated within its BLE mesh is always finds refuge in Apple's servers without explicit permission. Yes, Apple has assured its users the data that is circulated within the BLE mesh uses an end-to-end -end encryption and no one can decode it except the sender and the receiver. 
However, there is no way to independently verify Apple's claim on end-to-end -end encryption. The fact of the matter is end-to-end -end encryption can only safeguard a user from man-in-the-middle attack, but the endpoint, in this case, Apple, does have some kind of access to the encrypted files. Of course, Apple stated that it cannot see location data pertaining to offline devices such as AirTags. However, Apple retains data payloads from iPhones that are participated within its BLE mesh. This data payload includes location, account info, device fingerprints, and and so on. Considering the millions of iPhones involved in this global mesh, you start to wonder what would happen if this falls into the wrong hands. Here, we have to realize that if law enforcement or a three-letter agency comes and requests Apple for these sensitive data, it is safe to assume that Apple will comply to protect its interest. BLE Mesh is not the only weapon Apple has in its arsenal when it comes to privacy-invading features. In 2021, the company has introduced a CSAM or Child Sexual Abuse Material detection feature within its iCloud and iMessage platforms. This feature allows Apple to scan all your private media contents within iCloud and iMessage. However, after a backlash from privacy advocates, this feature is scrubbed by Apple. But Apple didn't completely remove it. It still retains a bundle of features called Expanded Protection for Children in iOS 15. 15.2 and above. The rabbit hole for this CSAM detection shenanigan goes even deeper. It seems that Apple uses the CSAM detection excuse as a cover to run a much deeper and nefarious activity on users. This feature is called on-device scanning or client-side scanning. By using the AI capability of iPhones, Apple can now scan image contents within iPhones and other compatible Apple devices locally without the intervention of remote servers. But AI found in newer smartphones including iPhones can do a much more complex task than scanning photos. By exploiting data gathered from sensors, they can accurately identify or generate users' profiles. History tells us that these highly sensitive user data are likely to be exploited by governments or three later agencies when the need arises. AI-enabled on-device scanning, in conjunction with the BLE Mesh, is the most sophisticated spying machine we've come across so far. Apple is exploiting its undeserved privacy-friendly tag to quietly install a very powerful weapon to eavesdrop on users without invitation. So, what is your opinion on the recent activities by Apple and its implications on user privacy? Please, drop a comment and let us know what you feel. If you like our content, give us a like and subscribe to our channel. Until we meet again, cheers!